Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of Why Is This Game Awesome? Today, I'm going to be talking about Risk of Rain. Now, Risk of Rain is a game not too many people have heard about, and that really does surprise me. I play this game all the time with my friends, and even by myself, and it's made for some of the most fun I've had in a game for quite a while. So today, I'm going to be talking about Risk of Rain, and what makes this game awesome. So some of you may be asking, what is Risk of Rain? Well, Risk of Rain is a game that's released on Steam that's all about collecting items and killing bosses at a ridiculously fast pace. When you load up the game, you'll only have one character available, but as you progress, more will be unlocked, so to avoid spoilers, even though it kind of is because it isn't the first character you unlock, to avoid spoilers, the character I'm playing as is the Bandit. Oh, and by the way, now would probably be a good time to mention, this game is hard. Like, really hard. All of the gameplay that I'm showing is on the easiest game mode, and me and my friend Icarus could only barely complete the game like that. It's incredibly fast paced and stressful at times, and the longer you spend in areas, the harder the game gets, so you never have time for grinding items or taking a break. You start in one of several random maps, and you have to kill the boss and all of the enemies to teleport to the next map. Which may seem easy at first, but when you get later in the game and you have to take on five bosses in one level, uh, it can be a little more difficult. The only way to stay on top of the increasing difficulty is to collect items, which are randomly found in chests or by other means spread around the world. This makes multiplayer actually harder, as the items have to go two ways, so someone normally ends up more overpowered than the other. But apart from that, multiplayer is just as fun as single player, or in my opinion, better. The gameplay, at least for me, is really addictive, and even though I've completed this game several times now, I still play it all the time because it has so much replay value. No two worlds are the same, because everything is randomly generated. Now from what I just said in the gameplay section, some of you may be instantly turned away from this game. It makes use of a random world generator, which a lot of people don't like because it can cause serious errors when making worlds. However, when I said that, I wasn't being 100% truthful, it isn't a completely random world generator. Risk of Rain has a preset list of maps for each world type, and when it comes to randomly selecting a map, it will choose from this list, meaning each map will be completely balanced, instead of the random mess you can get sometimes when playing Terraria, Starbound, or Minecraft. The items, enemies, and boss rooms throughout the levels are randomly generated though, meaning they can spawn anywhere in the level, which adds enough variation between levels so that even if you get the same map, you never know exactly where you have to go. In my opinion, the random world generator feature only adds to this game, as it makes it more unique and causes none of the errors that happen when you play games like Starbound, Terraria, or Minecraft, caused by bad world generation. I just had to clear this problem up in its own section, because I'm sure some people don't like random world generation, and I just needed to point out that this game does it in a very clever way, which solves all the problems found in other games. The presentation of Risk of Rain is really cool. There isn't too much to say about the graphics. From what you've seen in the video, you've pretty much seen what the game looks like. That doesn't mean they're bad, though. They're done in a retro, pixelated style, and in my opinion, this style is really cool. I've always been a fan of pixel art. When combined with the amazing soundtrack by Chris... Chris Doddaloo. Sorry for ruining your name there, Chris, but great job on the soundtrack. This soundtrack sounds amazing. If you're playing the game single player, this soundtrack will probably be your best friend. It's an amazing part of the game that adds so much atmosphere, especially when combined with the graphics, and this is most obvious in the last level. On the subject of the last level...
So if you didn't see the big warning label I put up, there are spoilers in this section of the video. So this is definitely where the game shines its best. In my opinion, the soundtrack for this level is the best in the whole game, and it truly feels rewarding to massacre waves of enemies to get to the final boss with such a deep and impending atmosphere. It can be incredibly difficult on how long it took you to get there to challenge this stage, as the difficulty may be really high and the enemies can be tough enough to just destroy your character. I mean, look at how many are attacking me here. Seriously? And the difficulty isn't even that high for me. Anyway, taking on this stage with multiplayer is definitely recommended because it makes it a lot easier, but that doesn't mean you can't do it by yourself. As you can see in the video here, my friend is AFK, so I had to take on this entire stage just by myself. Now the final boss shows up when you arrive in this room. His name is Providence, and the first time you see him is a really cool moment in the game, because he's the first enemy that by himself truly threatens you without having such a massive size advantage. All the other bosses in the game are so much bigger than you that you almost feel completely separate from them, but Providence just feels like another version of you that's more powerful. Anyway, the first time you see him, he seems really difficult, but after you've taken him on once or twice, you see that he actually has quite easy patterns to follow. They go something like this. First, he'll start jumping and swinging at you with his sword. Now, he has three or four different attacks, but most of them are pretty easy to dodge. After you've taken his initial life bar, he will then release two worms, a lot like the magma worm, which you have to take on at the same time. This part isn't too difficult, but it can be challenging depending on what item you have in your inventory. As you can see, I had the saw blade, and that makes this fight infinitely easier. In his final phase, he begins to summon shadows, which can do what he does, but you can't kill them, which makes fighting him a lot harder. Now the first time you fight him, the atmosphere does really get to you and it feels so stressful, but after you've taken him on a couple of times, it kind of loses its feeling, as you'd expect with any final boss in a game. So it's definitely the most rewarding feeling when you kill this boss for the first time. Again, multiplayer makes this fight easier because he's only really made to take on one target at a time, and being as prepared as you can, as you see, I have prepared a lot in this video but being as prepared as you can really can help in this boss fight. So after all I've said about this game, some of you may be really attracted to it, and others of you might not think it's your kind of thing. It's a great game in many ways, but it's not flawless, and it's definitely not for everyone. There are a few multiplayer issues I had, although this is probably only because of my internet, and I will just say it does require port forwarding or some kind of VPN to play with friends. Also, although the storyline, if you can call it a storyline, can be lengthened, it's a little short for me, and I wish that the final level had some kind of proper variation to it, because even though it's the most beautiful level in the game, it gets boring the fastest. All of this taken into consideration, I would say that if you've liked the look of the gameplay that you've seen in this video, then it's definitely a game worth checking out, and if you're looking on Steam for a fun multiplayer game to play, this is definitely one for you. So now, for the final verdict, I would say, with everything taken into consideration, that Risk of Rain earns a solid 8 out of 10. Let me know what you think in the comments, and make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw in this video. Later!